Hello everyone. So before I begin talking a whole lot about landscapes, you should all have with you a short graphic organizer that I gave you to take home and I'm going to ask you to please fill this out when I proceed to my PowerPoint. But um, And then you guys are all going to turn it in to me when you come to class on Monday. So um, I just want to start off um, about how I reminisce about different places and de destinations that I've visited in the past. But one thing that I make sure to do wherever I go is to get a good photo of the scenery around me. And it doesn't matter if I'm in the city or if I'm in the country or the mountains or on a beach. Everywhere I go, instead of taking selfies like many people like to do these days, uh, I like to take a photo of the environment around me. So that I don't have to rely so much on my memory to be able to remember what it looked or felt like to be there at that time. And when I look at an old photo, it sometimes gives me the chills because it allows me to remember that particular moment better or it even sometimes um, makes me remember that that moment even happened in the first place. But um, whenever I visit someplace new, I try to get a good photo of the nature around me. And as much as architecture interests me with all its unique and intricate designs and all that, there is nothing more beautiful and complex than nature itself. And when I look at old photos, I enjoy getting that feeling where I feel like I am in that same moment as in the photo. So when I look at an old photo of my feet in the sand in Mexico, it brings back that same feeling I felt when I was on that beach. And so in order to create this feeling of euphoria, I try to get a good picture of from the best angle possible that will allow me to capture the entire moment. Okay, so... When capturing a photo of a beautiful landscape, we should first think of the placement of the horizon line in our image. The horizon line can make or break an image. And basically what a horizon line is, is where the ground um, literally meets the sky. If we take a pencil or a, a marker and drew a line and trace it along where the ground touches the sky, that would be considered our horizon line. So in the photo we're looking at right now, our horizon line would be where the top of the mountains are touching the sky. So if we took a marker and traced along the top edge all across along that mountain, that would be considered our horizon line. And if you notice, our horizon line is in the top third portion of our image, or the top third section part of our image. And um, this implies that all the visual information below this horizon line is the most important visual information within the whole picture or the whole image. Um, and the, this visual information would be the grass and the trees and even parts of the mountain. But um, so yeah, if we if we place the horizon line in the center of the image, like the image we're looking at right now, um, other viewers and myself can often be confused which part of the image is most important. And in this image, um, it's actually hard to even tell or depict that there even is a horizon line because there's no high contrast in colors, um, especially if we were standing far, farther away from looking at this image, it might just look like a bunch of swirls of colors. Um, you can't even, besides not able to depict a horizon line, it's harder to even depict that there's water or a sky or a sun in this image. When I make my horizon line decision, I do this by first visualizing the resulting photo in my mind's eye, which is what I want all of you to do as well when you take photos or draw a landscape. Um, the placement of a horizon line is determined by which parts of the scene contain the visual information we think is the most important, which is kind of what I just touched on with you um, a couple seconds ago. If we apply the, the concept of rule of thirds, with horizon lines. We know that we can divide our scene into thirds, horizontally and vertically as well. If the most important information to be seen is below the horizon line, like a scene with lake and many reflections, like the photo we're looking at right now, we are going to place the horizon line in the upper third of our image. So I guess, as you can see in this photo, our horizon line is where the green ground above the lake is meeting the sky. So if we took a line and traced along where the ground is touching the sky, that would be our horizon line. And our horizon line in this image is 
is also placed in the top third portion of our image. And this is implying that all the, informa the visual information below it is the most important or the biggest focus in our image, which would be our water. So moving on, here's another one. Um, the quality of the photo is kind of blurry. Sorry about that. But um, as you can see, the horizon line in here is where the water is meeting the orange sky back there because that is where the ground is touching the sky. So that is our horizon line. And it's implying that all the information underneath it is um, the primary focus of the image. Here's another one. Um, our horizon line in this one would be the top of the mountains where it's touching, where they're touching the sky. The bottom left corner, yes, technically the trees, part of that tree would be part of the horizon line, but um, if you want to get technical, yeah, the trees are also part of the horizon line, but um, for the most part, the the main horizon line is the top edge of the mountains where it's touching the sky. And it's implying that the m most important visual information within this image is the trees and the water, most of the water. And here's another example, and I think it's our final example of a high horizon line. This one's pretty self-explanatory. The top of the rolling green hills is where our horizon line is, and because it's meeting the sky. So, but the same thing, um, it's vice versa for low horizon lines. As you could tell in this photo, the low horizon, the low horizon line is implying that all the visual information on top of it is more important than what's below the low horizon line. Um, so, for example, like a scene with a beautiful cloudscape is what we call that, um, like the photo we're looking at. Um, we would place a hor horizon line in the lower third, in the lower third of the image instead of the higher, upper third part. So here are a couple other examples of low horizon lines. The low horizon line in this photo would be the grass, or the t maybe if you want to get technical, the top of the trees at the bottom, and then um, it's implying that the most important visual information within this image would be the sky and even that um, that big tree right up in front there. To another slide. Here is another photo example of a low horizon line and it's of a sunset or a sunrise. Tell it's where the water is meeting the sky and the high contrast in colors really makes it easy um, to point out that horizon line. So here's another example of a low horizon line where the grass where the low, hor gr low horizon line is where the grass is meeting the sky and again the high contrast in color really makes it easy to point out that horizon line. And here's another one. Um, the horizon line is pushing more toward the center which which is still okay. Um, it does not always mean that the image will look confusing to the viewer uh, because most of the time when this happens there is a contrast in the color or detail that makes it easier for the viewer to know which side of the horizon is supposed to contain the most important visual information, which you could, can see on here. Um, is very high contrast of color, so it's easy to point out that horizon line. It's not confusing to know which side of the horizon is the most important visual information to see within the picture, um, unless common sense isn't that common so I'm only assuming that all the rest all the other viewers were, would assume that the dandelions are the most important visual aspect within this image but some may argue that it's the sky but um, sometimes it's not the artist's intent to make either side more important at all but to make both sides equally visually important so just because the uh, horizon line is in the middle does not mean 
the horizon line is confusing to the viewer or it does not mean that the artist intentionally uh, meant to make either side of the horizon line more important than the other. So here's another example, the middle horizon line. One more, I think this is the last one, but so yeah. Oh, here's another one. As, as you can tell, um, I like mountains. I think they're a beautiful, um, beautiful aspect of nature to include in landscape photographs or paintings or drawings. Um, but as you can tell, the middle horizon line is where the mountains are meeting the sky. If you were to take a pencil and trace along the top edges of, the mount of those mountains, that would be our horizon line. And um, this, you know, the middle horizon lines, like I said, they don't always necessarily mean that the image will be confusing to the viewer. Um, but especially this one, because um, there's a lot of contrast in colors and there's a lot more detail um, on the bottom half of, on the below, below the horizon line, which um, justifies why I, in my opinion, I think that um, the visual information below the horizon line is more important than the visual information on top of the horizon horizon line, which would be the sky, is uh, the reason I think this is because, you know, there is more detail that is incorporated in below the horizon line. But other other people might argue and say that there is no um, more important visual information on either side of the horizon line. Or there might even be someone that argues and say that the top portion of the horizon line is more important than below because they might point out all the different values of blues within the sky and how open the sky is and that they might justify that as their reasoning for why the sky is the most important visual information within the image. But, um, you know, that kind of ties along with why middle horizon lines can often um, send confusion because it's not just confusion um, of being able to point out the horizon line, which was our first scenario of the second slide we looked at before, but um, it brings confusion or um, debates um, to artists and other viewers of which side of the horizon line has, contains the most important visual information. And again, some people might say that, you know, there doesn't have, always have to be a more important side to a horizon line. But um, middle horizon lines are a great prompt for artists and other viewers um, to debate and analyze artwork. Because artwork is subjective and there is no right or wrong answer. Um, so I guess it's just up to the artists of what their intentions are. But even besides of what the intentions are of an artist, um, the interpretations might still come out different from the viewer. So, um, if we as artists pay attention to the placement of the horizon line, wherever we take a photo or draw a landscape, the viewer will know where to look and the artist also has a sense of control of where the viewer is looking. Now, nature is often chaotic. We travel through forests and rugged mountains and there is no sense of order. Animals often show the same random nature too. But humans, on the other hand, we don't relate well to chaos, unless you're a relative of my family, but that's another topic of discussion. Uh, most humans prefer some order in our lives and for things to be arranged in certain ways. That's why it's important that we have some sort of organization to our landscape photos and artwork so there is a path viewers can follow to make sense of nature's chaos. As we clarified before, this does not mean landscape art depicts only high and low horizon lines. There are horizon lines depicted in the middle of plains, just like the examples we uh, previously looked at and the example we're looking at right now. But artists tend to depict strong contrast between both sides of, of middle horizons to eliminate confusion if they do decide to use a 
you know, if they do decide to depict the middle horizon line or middle horizon line. So next class, I want everyone to bring a photograph of a landscape that you have personally taken of the environment around you and the horizon lines can be anywhere as long as you can identify it but I do strongly encourage everyone to apply the concept of the rule of thirds when taking your photograph remember the rule of thirds is if you divide your plane or your image into three sections um, if you decide to put your horizon line in the top third section that would imply that all your visual information below that is most important and the vice versa. If you decide to apply your horizon line in the lower third section of your image, then your image is going to imply that the visual information on top of the horizon line is the most important. After we uh, um, bring in our photographs, we are then going to use pastels, not in chalk pastels, not oil pastels, to um, because oil pastels don't blend as well and. Um, but you, you'll, found, you'll find out when you come to class um, next time. But we are going to use chalk pastels to create a landscape drawing of the environment around us while using our photos as a reference. So here are some landscapes that I took photographs of myself. Um, this one... Uh, this one is in Mexico, Cancun to be exact, and the horizon line in this image is where the water in the background is touching the sky. So I um, chose to put the horizon, that horizon line in the top third part of my image to emphasize or imply that the, all the information, visual information below my horizon line is the most important to look at in my image. All the information be below that horizon line is more important than looking up at the sky. But, you know, of course, art is subjective. Some people might still be focusing on that sky, especially since that um, hot air balloon, or not hot air balloon, because of that guy parasailing in the back. That might, that might distract us from what's below the horizon line. But, um, but yeah, I just use this photo as an example of where I applied my horizon line. So here's another example of a photo I took of a landscape from in Cancun, Mexico. Um, you could tell the where the water meets the sky. Um, that is where my horizon line is and it's in the top third section of my image and it's implying that all the visual information below that horizon line where, where the water meets the sky is the most important visual information within my image. I um, want the viewer to focus more on the chairs and the beach, as well as water, more than the sky. Here's another photo example I took myself, and this is in Bacon Creek, uh, Bacon Creek in Sioux City, Iowa. And the horizon line in this image would be in um, uh, where the top of the trees are meeting the sky. So if I took a pencil or a marker and traced along the top of those trees, that would be um, considered my horizon line. And all the visual information below this, um, which would be the grass and the water, is the most important visual information that I am trying to have as my main focus within my image. Here's one, I think this is my last one. This is a photo that I took from Denver, Colorado. Um, now this one, uh, the horizon line is at the bottom third of my image and the horizon line is where, if you can tell the black, the black shadows of the mountains in the background. That, if I took a marker and trace along the top of the, top of that, the mountains, excuse me, that would be um, considered my horizon line. And um, I took it from this angle to emphasize um, or put focus more on the sky and how spread out those clouds look and how open the sky looks. And um, so, yeah, so um, that was, this is my final experience. Oh, one more example. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is my last example. Um, this is a photo that I also took in Cancun, Mexico, and this is just an ex 
this is an example of more of where I apply to my horizon line more toward the middle of my image. And it's not confusing to the viewer, in my opinion anyway, because even though it's in the middle, there are strong contrasts between the colors of the sky and the water where it's clear where the water me where it's clear where the water meets the sky. You can clearly see where that horizon line is and um, you could tell that um, it's water below and that it's a sky above. So um, so yeah, that was my final example. So that was the final example of some photographs that I took of horizon lines and landscapes. But here are some examples of some pastel drawings of landscapes. So this one, um, thing, things are a little blended, um, too blended, I would say. In Well, just my opinion. Art is subjective, like I said. But um, it's kind of hard to depict the horizon line because this, where the sky meets the water in the top portion of the, the top, portion of the image um the blues aren't very in high contrast but you can still tell where the water meets the sky and um as well as the grass that is where our horizon line would be in this drawing so another example um the horizon line you can see the mountains where the mountains touch the sky in the top portion of the image um, that would be, be considered our horizon line in this image and then here's another example um, the horizon line would be well this one's a little tricky too because um, I would say the red is the kind of the pinkish line in the background is I'm assuming supposed to be um, trees but there's a little shadow above the trees I'm not sure if it's the sky a shadow from the sky or if it's the shadow from the trees but if it's the shadow from the trees then that would be we would draw our horizon line on top of that shadow but if it's part of the sky then we would draw our horizon line right across that red that red background that's supposed to be the trees that would be a, considered our horizon line and that's in the top third part of our um, image to imply that all the visual information below it which would be the grass and the the field and the stream. That's our most important visual information in this image. So here's our last example of a pastel drawing of a landscape. And you could tell where the red trees meet the blue sky. On If you took a pencil and traced along the top of those red trees, that would be considered our horizon line within this image. And all the visual information below the horizon line, which um, would be the most important visual information within our image. So when we all come to class on Monday with our photos, along with our completed graphic organizers, we are going to first each explain where our landscape is in our photo, and then as well as identify the horizon line in our photos, both of what I just did. And then we're going to use chalk pastels to draw our landscapes from our photos. And again, your horizon line can be anywhere you want um, in your photos and in your drawings as long as you can identify it. But I encourage us all to practice applying the rule of thirds when, when using our horizon lines. But as long as you can identify where your horizon line is, that's good enough. So, um, and when you are out and about taking photos, feel free to bring in more than one photo to class because it will just be more practice for us to identify um, different horizon lines. And, it'll, and it's always nice to be able to see um, different perspectives of our environment that we would not get to see otherwise. So I look forward to seeing everyone's landscape photos as well as getting started on our drawings. And I'll see everyone on Monday.